How do you tile a bathroom floor? Well, in today's video, we're gonna share how to tile a bathroom floor using 18 by 18 inch travertine tile and get it looking awesome. So one of the issues with travertine is sometimes the back of the tile can have divots in it or be uneven. So we're gonna share several tips with you today on how to back butter that tile and use T-Lock to get the tile floor nice and even and the grout joints uniform. So let's dive into those tips right now. Our preferred isolation membrane is Ditra. This prevents cracked tiles and grout. The first step is to clean the underlayment with a damp sponge, then to burn the thin set into the plywood. We're using all set in this case by Schluter. And then you use the notch side of the trowel to get your notches all running in the same direction. Cut your Dietra to size using a utility knife and then embed it using a float. Steve is also going to cut out a portion of the Dietra here for the toilet flange and then do the exact same process for the other side of it. Just make sure that you embed the Dietra really, really well into the all set. So again, when you're putting Dietra down, you always wanna have you know, an eighth inch to a quarter inch of room around the perimeter of the room. You don't want to just have it tight against the wall. And that's just for expansion and contraction. So, so you want to try to make this as flat as possible because this does actually raise slightly above the Dietra. You know, it, it's not problematic mostly for big format tile, but if you were to do a small mosaic tile, that little bump can actually kind of create a problem. So try to really smooth it out. Okay, then there's really two ways to go about this. You could take this curdy band and wrap it kind of slightly up the top like this and thin set it. Uh, and then if you, if you tiled against it, you can always just cut that edge off of it. Or you just buy some curdy fix and just caulk that whole joint. And so we'll just take this curdy fix and go alongside the top here. I'd say this is a pretty important joint in a lot of ways because, you know, when, when water rubs down the tub, goes beneath that grout joint right at the corner here, this is where you end up with problems. We're going to install some 18 by 18 inch travertine tile. It's, it's really kind of basically the same way you install any tile, only a couple things you have to consider when doing it. One, that when you buy a box travertine, the stuff is gonna look, you know, there's usually just so much variation in the difference of it look. And I happen to get kind of like a, I don't wanna say it's a low grade, but it's a cheaper travertine. It's like $2 a square foot, which is really inexpensive travertine. So my stuff is really gonna have quite a bit of flavor to it. And also just have a lot more imperfections than probably something you pay a little bit more money for. So like, look at this, look at the back of this tile. You can see how much, you know, how porous it is. And what you really have to do is, is back butter this completely so you can fill in all these voids. It's just, you know, it's, it's kind of the character of, of the travertine. So anyways, we got a six foot bathroom uh, by seven foot. So it, it's fairly simple with an 18 inch tile. We're just gonna start on this wall um, and I usually like to work from my tub back and the main reason for working off the tub is because that's where I mean that's going to be your main focal point of what you see uh, as far as being straight going off the tub uh, I think usually makes the most sense you, you square off the tub and then and work your way back and a lot of times when you have trim on the sides and stuff like that you can hide some of uh, some some of the unsquareness. So with 18 with 18 inch tile, a full tile will bring us straight over into the middle of that doorway. So I like I did an L notch on this one. So I'd advise you know obviously just uh, laying it out by hand first. You know at least at least the first row, and make sure that everything's going to look okay. And then if your tub wasn't 100% straight, you can always just take your uh, a pencil line and, and, and just scribe cut your tile that little bit and then fit everything in. So that's, that's kind of a little trick in case you had like a round tub or maybe your tub isn't 100% straight. And actually this looks like it could use a little bit of that. Yeah, so 
so that'll work out all right. So what I normally do is see I have my my door is obviously on the inside of the door or inside of the bathroom, and I just go straight to the edge of where that door is, uh, and then your carpet would basically wrap the round right to the edge of that. Always try to go into your door frame at least an inch so that you can so you can see all of your tile inside the bathroom. Okay, so we're gonna use a pretty large towel for or um, trial for this. Um, basically that travertine is almost uh, half an inch thick so I'd recommend using like a half by half square notch trial. It really just gives an extra bit of cushion to it and allow you to, to level it out. You kind of want to go the thickness of the tile, you want to go at least that thickness of, of, a, of a joint on it. And I would definitely recommend using a white thin set as well, mainly because uh, you're filling in all those grooves underneath that stone and you don't want to darken the tile. So using a white thin set will avoid that from happening. Definitely back there. Every business. Open all those grooves. So this looks pretty bad against this tub, and I think it's because my tub kind of bellows out here. So I'm just gonna actually just put my pencil pencil against here and scribe. And just cut that. Take these two pieces out and try to scribe cut that. As you can see here, it took Steve some effort to pull those tiles off the floor. We had great coverage on the back of the tiles. That's the coverage you want to see. Now he's using an angle grinder here with a continuous rim blade. Be very careful when you do that when you're cutting your tiles to size. But you'll see Steve taking a very methodical approach to this installation. Back buttering the tiles, setting them into the T-lock system, and doing this one tile after the other. The best thing that you can do is follow his approach here because you're going to clean the tiles, add your T-lock like he's doing, cinching them down with the pliers, and this really gets a great professional look when you're done. Now, the other thing he's doing here is using an old carpet knife to clean out the grout joints and then sponging off the tiles as he goes. You'll notice that he's using directional troweling, cleaning the edge of the tile from thin set, and then back buttering and setting the tile for every single tile, and then compressing those ridges with his hands and then using the T-lock. Yep, it's about as good as you can get. A cheap paintbrush can also be used to clean the grout joints. Okay, so it's always a good idea since I don't have a laser or anything, I'm just going to use my six foot level just to make sure that everything's sitting nice and straight. But again, like the, the top is where you're really, your eye is going to go to. So. Steve is tracing the location of the waste pipe for the toilet flange and then using an angle grinder with a continuous rim blade diamond blade that is and so one of the best methods for cutting out a circle in a tile is using an angle grinder like this but take your time wear your safety gear Steve's holding a sponge up against the angle grinder blade as he goes to try to reduce the dust okay that works pretty well
one thing with travertine and, and stone is that it's a very straight edge. So lippage is very, very easy to see on this type of thing. A lot of those porcelain towel, they kind of have a round edge and you can get away with having lippage, but when it comes to stone, you really need to have everything nice and flush or you can see that edge and feel that edge for that matter very easily. So it makes it nice to use a leveling system like this to make sure that everything is even. This T-lock system is definitely a um, nice system, but if you're using something like a, a high gloss travertine or a high gloss marble, it might not be the best suit just because when you're actually pushing this together, it could scratch the tile. But this is a honed tile. It's, it's, I'm not too worried about it. I don't think you'd ever even see any of the, the minor scratching, but something that's high gloss could be seen in the right light. Clean excess then set off the edge of the tile before inserting the T-lock clips. This will help prevent excess thin set from oozing up between the clip and the tile. Continue to fill in the waffles and use directional troweling so all the trowel ridge is going in the same direction. And then back buttering your tiles as you go. You'll notice here as Steve sets the tiles, he tries to set the tiles such that it hits the, the clips first. And that really helps prevent the thin set from oozing up in between the tiles. And then he installs his wedges using the pliers. You don't necessarily have to use the pliers with the T-lock. You can just use your hands and that's good enough. Now the deal is here we're getting the the measurement off the doorway to cut out that notch for the door jam and Steve just used an angle grinder to do that by the way. And then he compressed the tile into the thin set and cleaned it off with his sponge. You'll notice that you want a really clean edge at the doorway. You want your tiles to be nice and even. That's super important, especially if you're gonna use a Schluter metal profile in the doorway to kind of cap, cap it off. Now cleaning the, the grout joints with that carpet knife is super important and critical. It helps reduce the cleanup the next day. Steve continues to use directional troweling and then back buttering as he goes. The nice thing about using a tile leveling system like T-Lock is the T-Lock system will compress the tile down into the thin set and create a better bond overnight. Uh, I know some people will, you know, definitely argue that point, but we have found that to be the case and you definitely want a good bond with your tiles. Now, Steve is using the wedges uh, as he goes. You'll notice he's using two wedges per side for these 18 by 18 inch tiles. And he's also leaving about a quarter inch gap at the wall for expansion and contraction. So the other thing, when you use travertine and you put it through the wet saw, you wanna wipe it off before you go thin setting it. It's just the, the thin set might not bond to it very well if it's wet, so. Just dry it off. If you have pipes coming out of the floor like Steve does, you'll have to transfer those pipe locations to the tiles like he's doing here. Leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room, maybe about an eighth of an inch. That way you don't have to be super perfect. He had to pre-drill a hole for his diamond bit, and then he just wiggled the diamond bit back and forth, as you can see, dipped it in water to cool it down to preserve the diamond bit, and then that's how he got his hole. Now for the register, the vent register, he's cutting out a slot for it using his angle grinder. This is really kind of the easiest way to do it. And then dry fitting, make sure that it fits and then setting it in the thin set and using the T-lock to get it nice and tight. So you'll see him doing this for the cold water side of the vanity there. So just the same technique for that. And we think the, the tile floor turned out pretty good, not too shabby. As you saw, we back buttered every single tile in today's video and we used T-lock. Those two things are what allowed us to get a perfectly flat travertine bathroom floor. And so if you're looking to do a similar project or you're using large format tiles in your bathroom on the floor or on the wall, we highly recommend T-Lock. And we're selling that over on bathroomrepairtutor.com because it's a great tile leveling system 
the clips don't break, you can reuse the wedges, and we also offer free shipping uh, to anybody who orders through our website. So that link is down in the description, or you can just go to bathroomrepairtutor.com and shop on our store for a T-lock. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know what your questions are down in the comments, and we'd be more than happy to help you out. Take care.